Well, hello, everyone. We got an interesting topic here. We're going to call it focusing on what's not done yet. That's what clients tend to do. <laughs> and and my guest today, who's going to help me flesh this out and bring it more for this year to your attention, is Anne. And Ryan, say hello, Ann, please. Hi, hi, Gary. Hi, everybody. Um, so, Ann, Ann, let's talk for a moment about that. You've been you've been a um, an EFT or in an optimal EFT. -er. In fact, you're one of our one of our advanced students, and so on for for many years. Hmm. But when we talk about the idea of what's not done, I mean, clients we will oftentimes get a lot of really good stuff done with them. Hmm. But then they say, but, but my shoulder still hurts. Hmm. And all the other stuff we did, you know, the headaches and the anxiety and, and you go get along with Uncle Charlie. And that seems to be you know, a lot of stuff you still, but it's like that other stuff doesn't count. Hmm. My shoulder. Hurts. Hmm. <laughs> You've had that experience, I think. I, I have had that experience, um, and I think it's part of our human condition that somehow we we focus on something, the anxiety, and then that fades away as we do this work, um, and then we just focus on what's not done rather than it's like it disappears. I mean, I know people sometimes talk about the apex effect where people completely forget that the thing was even there. And I think it's really important for us, you know, as human beings to kind of see what is done and to acknowledge it and in a way to have appreciation and gratitude for what is done and to kind of pause with that before we rush on to what still has to be worked on. Yeah, I, I think I think maybe a, a central message that we can we can share with others here is we get a lot done and the power of it is often so subtle that people just dismiss it. It's like you said earlier, like it was never there to begin with. It was never a problem. We'll mention it and we go, oh, really? I had that problem? In, in fact, sometimes when we're delivering this for clients, we have to actually be salesmen to remind them of what it was we did, you know? Like, like, like if I'm on session four with somebody, uh, we'll start off, and I, I'm going to have to say, well, now, okay, now, now, let me look at my list here. When we first started, your headaches were like uh, every day, and they got to be 9 or 10 for several hours. And then after one session, they went down to one or two, and then after the second session, it was zero, I think. How's it now? Okay. <laughs> it's still zero. Okay, I haven't had one for four weeks or something like that, okay? Mm -hmm. and it, which is stunning. No medicines, mm -hmm. no pills, no massage, <laughs> no, no hypnosis, no nothing except what we were doing with unseen therapists and so on. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, they will just dismiss it. Right. Yeah. In fact, I think you do that sometimes. You, you, will, you will go back to your... Uh, your original questionnaire. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I do. And and I mean, you, you have always emphasized like the importance of, you know, testing and measuring. And, and part of it is that in a way, when we're working with other people, we sort of need to be that mirror to kind of show people, well, do you remember this is where things were? So um, I, I, I had a client who came to me a couple of years ago um, with a lot of issues with her family siblings and just not getting on with this one and that one feeling very i mean her words were isolated and alone and not included and all of that and and we worked away on that and and when we got to about the third or fourth session i just had this real nudge from the unseen therapist like get you know, get that out again you need to go through it and at the beginning of the session I said can I read to you what you wrote on the form like this is what I want to work on this is my issue and and I read through and and it was you know it was a reasonable amount of text because you know it had all kind of it was very much it bubbled up at the time and she sat back in the chair and she said you can tear that up she said that's that's not me anymore you know, it was that much change. Now we can, I mean, here's the thing, because sometimes as you know, Gary, people 
hear things like that and go, oh my goodness, three, four sessions and it's done and dusted and then have that expectation. I mean, we have continued to work that same person and I for you know a couple of years after that on and off and periods of intense work and, and in between. So, I mean, our work is more than just one thing, but it was staggering. You know, it was like, you can tear that up. That's, that's not me anymore. Um, yeah. And yet, because each time she would come, she would say, and today I want to work on this, or this is what's come up. Had we not gone back to that, and if someone had asked her, she might have said, well, I don't know if I'm, you know, really getting anywhere with this work. And, and it was just the contrast between what had been there and what was now there. So, yeah. 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 And so the, 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 there's a beauty and a, a puzzle at the same time. It's like these things happen at such a deep level mm-hmm. that it's, it's, it gets done so well. It's, you almost think you'd have to hit somebody with a base. It's like somebody needs to be hit with a baseball, but oh, 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 I see now it's, mm-hmm. it's all different, but it happens so subtly mm-hmm. and it's just so gradually and it's just so integrated within that they don't even realize they had the problem. Let me, I, 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 there's, this has lots of different little features to it. I'm gonna give you, give you an example. Um, one fellow I was working with, very severe, very severe agoraphobia, very fear anxiety, panic attacks, had to, had to always you know, take Ativan wherever he went. Uh, he couldn't go very far from his home without having all kinds of problems, et cetera. And this one worked really well uh, and really quickly, much more quickly than many do. Okay. Um, and he recognizes all the changes and that's great, 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 great. Along the way, he also had OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. You always had to have things just in the right order, you know, books all lined up just right, had to be all very neat and everything else. That went away. And I didn't even know he had it. Okay. Brilliant. And he didn't know it went away until he happened to notice that it was no longer, he no longer cared about whether the books were all lined up just perfectly. <laughs> he, he didn't yeah. even notice it until he said, oh, oh, yeah. And then he he just told me about it. <laughs> so, That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. But that brings us, that brings us to another point here. Mm-hmm. Um and that is a lot of people come, most people will come to us because they have, or they will join our advanced course and this kind of thing, because they have something that bothers them. Yeah. They have a pain someplace, disease symptoms. Uh, they have a phobia. They're not getting along with somebody in the workplace or whatever. Something's really bothering them. They have a focus that they want to address. Yeah. But we're not, see, that's not really our focus. They, they may come, they may well get what, what they're coming for, that is relief on that particular item. Yes, mm-hmm. many people do, of course. But that's not really where we're coming from, is it? No, <laughs> in short. I mean, the, the aim, as I see it, and I, I've learned from you, Gary, is personal peace, like peace within our system. And I, I think if, if, if any of us that are here are listening to this, you know, think of a time when we felt just peaceful, at ease, restful, just like just inflow, whatever the words are for it. If somebody said, you know, would you like that more and more? I mean, who wouldn't go for that? And my sense is the more we aim for that, which, as you have said before, you know, we find the emotional things that you know, prevent us from having personal peace in our system, things that happen in the past, things that are happening at the moment. But really, the more we have that, what I see, you know, in myself and with people I work with, what I see is the more the shoulder pain or the knee pain or whatever it might be, it it either fades as a result of more of that peace coming into our being, or it just doesn't feel so important. It's like, it's not under the microscope anymore. It's like, Oh yeah, you know, yeah, my shoulder, yeah. Sometimes it's not great in the cold weather, but I just sleep on the other side and actually that's okay now. You know, it just it it's like the, the magnifying glass comes off it. Yeah, it's a but the the aim, as you're talking about, the aim is 
not necessarily at that shoulder pain or whatever no. the particular focus might be. Remember, plants are focusing on what's not done yet. Okay, But the aim yeah. really isn't on that which is not done yet. The aim really is personal peace in the system. Yeah. We aim at the specific events that are loaded with, let's say, anger and grief and guilt and fear and resentments and this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And instead of having the system go like that and manifest all kinds of negative chemistry, which shows up in various ailments, mm-hmm. we aim for the, that's the cause of these things. Yeah. Okay. Get personal peace, get that better and better and have more peace, Mm -hmm. less reactions to things. And Mm -hmm. somehow, whether you're getting along with your family better, you're getting along with your spouse better, your brother-in-law, you're getting along with your boss, your coworkers, there's more Mm -hmm. peace. Things don't really get to you so much anymore. And along the way, by the way, uh, those Parkinson's symptoms are fading. Okay. Mm -hmm. And along Mm -hmm. the way, the restless leg syndrome, not, not so much there. That's because the cause, the cause is fading. So we're aiming at personal peace. Hmm. That's what we're really aiming at. Hmm. You know, get me going lovely. here for a while. <laughs> it's lovely. Well, as, as I listen to you, what strikes me is how much greater the ripple, if you imagine pebble in a pond, how much greater the ripple from that place of peace as much of it as we can get we're human so we come in and out of it but the ripple that is from that to every aspect of our life as opposed to the ripple that just necessarily comes from i've got to get rid of my shoulder pain yes yeah it has far greater effect but like we've been emphasizing it is more subtle yeah it is is. more subtle yeah Aunt aunt sally who you can't stand shows up at a family gathering sometime and for and you don't even notice it but you're having this great conversation with aunt sally you couldn't even imagine before but it happened so naturally and it, maybe when you're in the middle of it or look back at it, you go how'd that happen mm. Mm. <laughs> yes. and that's that's because the stuff that's been you know in our own personal volcanoes if you will and we all have we all have one whether we like to think about it that way or not you know yeah. Ah, has become more and more dormant, more mm. and more dormant, more mm. peace, less ailments, and so on. Mm. Anyway, and anything else you want to add before we sign off here? No, I think that's lovely. All right. Well, everybody, I hope you've got, a, you've got a, some good messages out of this. I do want to emphasize that below all of this uh, is a little point where you can, where you, I'm pointing you to uh, the essential links where we have a, my free ebook called The Unseen Therapist, a free newsletter. We have advanced training and things like that. So, you know, you can go farther, farther there. So until next time. Mm-hmm.